So when you last left us, we told you we were going through Harecastle, and then we just kind of appeared somewhere different, but I still had my lucky pants on. There you go. So what happened? Right, we did get to Harecastle. You remember the lovely couple with the matching all-weather outfits? We got there, but when we were taking the kayak off the roof, <laughs> there was a bit of an incident. Spladoosh! We, <laughs> we have a waterproof cover for the kayak, which isn't quite waterproof, no. so it's been collecting water for about a week. It's really rained quite a lot. If you don't live in the UK, we've had a lot of rain. And it's slowly been filling up with water. So when we unfastened it to remove it, <laughs> the weight of it just went and it just fell in the canal. So by the time we'd retrieved the kayak, which involved Sean going to the other side of the canal with the pole, and we were kind of pushing and pulling with the pole to bring it into the boat, by the time we'd done all that, we had to get going and get in the tunnel. So we had no time to set the camera equipment and the lighting equipment and everything up. Well, you did record something, but you forgot to turn the light on. <laughs> Whoever's fault it was, it didn't get done <laughs> properly. So we are at Westport Lake, or West Point Lake, as I've been telling everybody. Westport Lake. Westport. Uh, which is just the other side of Harecastle Tunnel. There it is. Fancy a dip in this weather. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's actually a really nice place. Uh, originally built in the 1890s, a local farmer built it as like a recreational place for people who couldn't afford to go to Rill or Blackpool. Really? Yeah. Do you know who opened it? Go on. You? Edward Heath, Prime Minister. Ted Heath. There you go. And then it fell into, what, in 1890? Yeah. I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> and then it fell into disrepair and it was uh, redone up again in the 80s and reopened, I'm guessing, by Ted Heath. <laughs> and there's like loads of wildlife here. There's uh, like tufted ducks and geese and great crested creep, loads of old coots. <laughs> it's a really nice place. It's nice for exercise. If you fancy a walk around, it's about a mile. So you can run around it like, uh, I don't know, like half a time if you want some exercise. It's really lovely. It is. But we promised you a trip through Harecastle Tunnel. So we've turned round. So we've been here a few days. Like Sean says, we've turned round. Uh, we've got some diesel, we've uh, filled it with water. We are going to go back through Harecastle Tunnel just so that we've done it for you. Yeah, there you go. That's how nice the we are. Things we do for you. Go <laughs> Come on. During the winter months, between November and March, you have to book passage to go through Aircastle Tunnel. You can either ring CRT customer services or you can do it online, which is what we did. It is quite easy. And there's still quite a few opportunities, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, at 9 and 11 going northbound, 8 and 10 coming southbound. So there's plenty of chance to do it. If you want to go through, book online 48 hours in advance. There's something really special about Harecastle Tunnel, and I don't know what it is, I can't put my finger on it. It's not the longest tunnel, it's about one and a half miles long. It's not the highest or the deepest, there's no records attached to it. There's just something about it that really fascinates me. Now this isn't the original tunnel. This is the original tunnel. It was built by James Brindley in 1770. Now the poor chap died two years after they started building it. He never got to see it when it was completed in 1777. But it's quite a narrow, shallow tunnel. There's no towpath in there. So the horses used to have to be walked by children over Boat Horse Road, over Harecastle Hill, and meet them at the other side near Kids Grove. The boaters would have to leg it through the tunnel. It's a slow process, it would take about three hours. 
So you've got queues forming at both sides, congestion on the canal back in them days. And that's why they built the other tunnel. Thomas Telford built the other one. When it was finished, all the southbound traffic would go through one tunnel and the northbound traffic would go through the other. It made things much easier. But then they started having problems with this tunnel. Brindley Tunnel was collapsing. The subsidence in the hill was causing partial collapses in the tunnel. And in 1914, they closed the tunnel altogether. It was just too dangerous. You couldn't get through it anymore. They inspected it for a while, but in the 1960s, these big gates were put on and that was it. Nobody's been in ever since. I'd love to have an explore though, wouldn't you? <laughs> now the color of the water is blamed on Brindley's tunnel. The iron ore in the hill leaks through and seeps into the water. And that's why the Trent and Mersey around Harecastle is this orangey color. And this is the new tunnel, built by Thomas Telford in 1827. Not just him, I'm guessing there was two or three others helping him. <laughs> James Potter was one of them. He was the resident engineer and he was congratulated for managing to build a tunnel in a perfect straight line for one and a half miles. That's some feat back in those days, isn't it? Now this one was built with a towpath, which meant the horses could pull the boat through. So it was quicker than Brindley's tunnel where they were still legging it. But in 1914, they went one step further. They put an overhead electric cable through the tunnel and an electric tug would pull the boat through, taking power from the cable. Imagine a bumper car with the pole in connection with the cable. But then diesel engines became popular. So in the 1950s, the fan room was built. Looks like a house, but above the entrance to the tunnel, you've got three huge fans. And what they do is they close the doors here. It's an airtight seal leave the north doors open, turn the fans on, and it pulls air through the tunnel, extracting the diesel fumes, making it safer for diesel boats to use the tunnel. Ingenious. But then things started going wrong, just like with Brindley's tunnel. Subsidence started causing the roof to come down in the tunnel. So in the 1970s, they closed the tunnel down to make the repairs. They spent quite a lot of money. At the same time, they got rid of the towpath, so it widened the tunnel too. But it's open again now, and it, it's a fascinating place. Shall we go through it? today and one boat following just behind us and as soon as he's through they're going to slam the door shut, turn the fans on, draw the air out. Over the years, just like in the Brindley Tunnel, subsidence from the hill has caused the roof of the tunnel to come down. So as we go through, it gets shallower and shallower. The roof comes down further and further. You can see them coming because they've painted them like a, a bright or fluorescent colour so that you don't bang your head on it like some poor chap did. He didn't make it.
rumours and stories over the years about this tunnel being haunted. <laughs> and it, there's three stories. One is that a young lady on her way down to London was murdered by boatmen. The other is that one of the navvies that built this was decapitated in an accident and he wanders the tunnel looking for his head. <laughs> and then there's another where a boatman and his wife were arguing and the argument got so bad that he killed her, chopped her head off and dumped her body in the pit nearby. Oh. The thing that gets me is that apparently the, the apparition is of a headless woman screeching. How can she screech if she's got no head? <laughs> Through the top of her neck. <laughs> Done. Lucky tunnel pants. Success. They'll be on sale from next week. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> uh, we promised you Harecastle Tunnel and there it was. Uh, the boat behind us has come through as well. So the plan now is we're going to go back down the three locks and moor up at Red Bull. Again, for the fourth time. <laughs> And we're back at Red Bull in Kidsgrove. Again. For the how many time? How many? How many? 84. 84 <laughs> time. You have to excuse us because we did light the fire before we came to talk to you. We hope that's all right. Yeah? Cold on the boat. Uh, Harecastle Tunnel then. Lovely. Yes. Didn't see the ghost. Nope. No incidents. My lucky tunnel pants have a 100% success record. They're on sale next week. I'm not washing them. He is. <laughs> Uh, I did have a little bump though, coming into lock 42, uh, I kind of slipped and just managed to catch it on the GoPro. <laughs> I think it frightened the swans more than it frightened me, but I went down like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> I didn't say potatoes in the... In no! <laughs> when we were practicing, did I? Uh, definitely like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Think back of the toilet vlog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're back at Red Bull, we're staying here for a couple of days and then we are Stopping going backwards and forwards, we're going in one direction. Yay! North! That direction. Uh, towards the end, at the northern end of the Trent and Mersey, towards the Shropshire and the Bridgewater. I'm not telling you which way we're going yet though. You'll have to wait and see. Ha! Uh, but that's it for this week. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the vlog. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, click subscribe. If you don't subscribe, uh, well, basically, his mum comes round here. You don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> uh, hit the notifications icon. YouTube will let you know every time we release a brand new video. Leave comments and questions down below. We don't bite. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it until next week. Take care. Thank you for watching and we'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
Oh my, it's freezing. <laughs> you know, the couple with the matching uh, all weather <laughs> things. No, hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> At Red Bull. Again. You did. <laughs> Sounds like one of those whistles when you were a kid. You know what I mean? I want one of them for Christmas. Get me one of them for Christmas. We didn't see the ghost. We have a little... We, we, uh, oh. Holy boo boo. No. <laughs> Holy boo boo. We go in in one direction. Not literally, because that would be perverse. <laughs> Hair Castle Tunnel isn't Due to, that was some good feet back then. That was some good feet. That was better than the Brindley tunnel over there. But then what? Right, yeah. Really well engineered. Basically dug through in less than three years, which is what I just said. Brindley tunnel didn't. Brindley's tunnel. basically dragged through the it had a it had a built by Thomas Telford in 90 built by Thomas Telford in 1820 it's annoying now that dog's annoying they look like bumper cars but like 18 no 1900 Ugh. shall we go through it We've All done! Sorry. All Go done! On. And then again. Sean wiping his nose. See, we're only human. It stinks and everything. You can't say that! No, I can't say that. Snood! <laughs> oh, gosh! I'm, uh, I'm crashing! At 9 o'clock, I, 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 I nearly had that. <laughs> Between the. You alright? Go! Do that. 